Hey everybody, I pray this video finds you blessed. This week I have a piece of Manzanita burl. It was sent to me by Rich. Thank you so much, Rich. It is such a beautiful burl and beautiful colors after I looked up online to see exactly what was going on inside this burl and, and what kind of colors so I can decide what colors to use when casting. I decided to go with black because that would make the fiery reds and oranges of this burl really stand out and and kind of be the star of the show. I did add some Arteza's fine glitter just to kind of give it a little bit of a shine and pop and, and some sort of interest within that black. And I also added off camera when I did my second pour a little bit of red to some of the black dye and it kind of caused like this cool looking uh, swirliness in it. I did have to pour this a couple of times. I did it off camera. Um, I poured too much on my second pour so it did overheat and crack and that will happen if you pour way too much. It will, you'll get uh, exothermic cracks. And I just left it in the container and re-poured it again to fill those cracks and that worked out just fine. I'm drilling just a small hole because I'm going to put a nail in my waste block that will help line up the two pieces when I put the hot glue on. Just don't forget when you're turning that piece off or, or pulling it off that there's a nail in there so you don't hit it with your tools.
When I'm deciding how to shape a piece, normally I start with some sort of uh, idea to begin with, but not all the time that works out. And I'm sure a lot of you have been wood turning for a while know that uh, your plans quickly change uh, on some pieces, depending on what's going on and what, what it's looking like. But for most pieces I make, I usually try to get the bottom established and then the top established and get those within the uh, sizes and shapes that I want them and then I just kind of connect A and B together uh, to just fill in that space so it helps you especially if you're visual and you don't you're not one to measure or um, really follow particular rules which there are the, like the rule of thirds and things like that I won't get into those because I don't measure I don't follow them in a sense um, of, of measuring but uh, visually visually I think that's um, kind of the rule I follow I did do photography prior to turning so the rule of thirds is uh, very much a part of photography that may be reason why this um, these shapes and these curves and and the thirds seems so natural to me because I had prior experience using that method so like I said just connecting a and B and then filling in the in-between uh, with what shape and flow looks good now because this burl is not stabilized I I've noticed a lot of little cracks and pits and things like that that um, I knew that once I put my resin coating on it would cause air bubbles and maybe give me a hard time So I decided to use the penetrating resin to kind of seal that up really good before I sanded it and then put a final coat on it Now as you can see there's a lot of bubbles on this piece because the penetrating resin um, as it's absorbing in to all those cracks and crevices things like that the resin is displacing the air so the air has to you know come up and that's the reason why there's bubbles and that's okay because that's not going to be my final coat I just wanted to get the burl kind of like stabilized at least on the top surface and sanded so I can turn it around and hollow it out and then I would coat or do a final finish all at one time another wood turner friend of mine Lynn he made this uh, steady rest and he allowed me to borrow it for this turn I, I find that it makes it a lot um, better even though this piece is kind of short and I've turned pieces like this before without the steady rest I did notice a big difference in just the vibration and I was able to get this piece a lot thinner uh, the walls of it a lot thinner because it was a lot more uh, stable after using the Tim Yoder hollowing system for about a year almost um, my one complaint is after the third time using it the screw that holds the cutter head to the rod it, it so soft it just welled out um, you have to especially turning resin pieces those tips dull fairly quickly and so you have to you know pull them out continually throughout the turn so that screw does get used quite a bit and so I did email them to see about getting a replacement and I never heard anything back so I just found a screw that I had um, laying around that fit the thread pattern it's a Phillips head and it, I can't get it as tight it's also a cheap screw soft so I just have to try to find something that that um, that'll be durable enough it's just one of those things where you don't remember until you pull the tool out and you realize that it needs it needs some TLC and as soon as you put it away you forget about it so that's my only complaint so far as I just wish they had more durable um, screws to hold these parts together because they are worked you know quite a bit
So this is the first coat. Um, like I said in my other videos, you just want to put a nice thin uh, coat. And this would have been a perfect finish and a perfect coat if it wasn't for the fact of dust. Um, dust got kicked up. Obviously, there's dust all over my shop, but before I could get the box put on it, um, dust got kicked up and stuck to the surface. So I would have been just fine if I hadn't had dust. It was a little warmer outside the weekend that I did the finish, so I didn't have to keep the lathe running too, too long uh, for about an hour at 50 RPM. Before applying the second coat, I just sanded 400 grit. And like always in my resin pieces, I like to use these, um, they're acrylic coins made by Bob Cook. It's laser art by Cook. You can find them on Facebook. I'll put the link for him in the description below. And I just filled it with Arteza paint. They are embossed on the back. And you, what I love about that is you can put them whatever colors you want to and then set them in. The bottom of this piece was giving me a fit for whatever reason. So it is not as glossy as the rest of the piece, but that's fine. It's going to be sitting on that all the time. So it being super shiny isn't, um, to me, imperative. Thank you, everybody, for watching my videos. I pray you all have a wonderful weekend. Take care and God bless.